Hello everyone. So today, as I spoke about in my last video, I'm going to be talking about Diana and how I think that people should build her instead of how people are building her now. So unlike the other junglers which I've spoken about, Diana has a fairly good win rate already. However, I still feel like people could be improving on how they're actually building Diana and uh, a bit of their playstyle, but generally there's only really one way to play Diana. Try and get a triple dash by like auto Eing on the minion and then auto Q Eing on the minion then dash to them and dash to them again, you know. So that's the most like, that's the highest level Diana combo that you're really going to get in my opinion. So first of all, let's talk about what I think the ideal build should be and then we'll go into other builds and then we'll go into my other ideal build which I think is pretty cool. So the first ideal build which I have here is going to be Crown of the Shattered Queen, Seraph's Embrace, Abyssal Mask, Frozen Heart, Lich Bane, Zonia's, and Zonia's Hourglass, right? All of those together is a very very good combination. I go Crown, people, a lot of people say why do you go Crown on something like Diana? Before Crown came out, a lot of people had this conception that Crown was going to be this item which isn't actually going to be played on um, the item, um, the champions which the item was supposed to be made for, which is our mages, which are fairly squishy like Victor, Velko, Zera, stuff like that. And instead, it's going to be played on Bruiser, All Engage sorts of. Um, sorts of AP champions like Diana. Diana's really the best example because when Diana goes in, she like goes fully in, right? So she has to R in and then when she's Ring in she's subject to damage because she doesn't like have damage resist when she's Ring in, whatever it might be. And after the item came out a lot of people kind of threw away this conception for some reason. However, I don't think I think that this idea is still true. If you're going to be effectively a frontline and you're not building completely tanky because this this build is a mix of tank, you only really have two tank items, then you're going to have to be tanky in another sort of way. And you don't need to be tanky for very long, right? When you're going in, all you're really doing is trying to look for this perfect R. You're probably going to try and get off like uh, your E and your Q and your, uh, and your W and stuff like that, right? And in that time, you need to not get blown up instantly. So because of that, I think that Crown is actually really, really good on Diana if you find yourself getting blown up very quickly. Because this build isn't uber tanky, but it's fairly tanky. Also, Crown gives an insane amount of AP when it's uh, active and just been destroyed. I think it's the highest uh, single AP item in the game. I think it's just above um, at, level, uh, at level 18, assuming that you've... Um, that your full build, I think it gives the most AP out of any item, which isn't like a hidden AP item like uh, Rabadons or like um, anything which pretty much scales, I guess, with, with AP, like Rabadons, like Demonic Embrace, like Seraph's Embrace, stuff like that, right? So that's why I think Crown's pretty good. So not to mention, Crown is an extremely cheap item. So yeah being cheap is ideal for like a first second item the move speed also helps out a lot because it means you don't have to buy boots that along with um lich bane is sufficient in, in order to give you move speed equal to that of boots or maybe a bit less depending on um, what sort of boots you have and it gives i wrote this down it gives a maximum of 150 ap which is insane for a 2800 uh cost item so I'm going to read out all of the all of the reasons why I build what I build and then we'll go into the damages between that and the other builds I have. So the new Seraph's updates make it OP. It makes it absolutely busted on every single champion. If you can go Seraph's, if you have mana and you're an AP champion, go Seraph's. It's OP. It's disgusting. I don't know why or how it got to this point, but it's, 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 it's disgusting. So... It gives you a 900 HP shield late, assuming you have all your mana, which you probably will be, considering you have a lot of mana items and you're in the jungle normally on Diana, so you're going to be getting a lot of mana regen. This is why um, Seraph works so well with junglers as well, because you can always stay full mana. In the, uh, like compare that to a rise, which is always like running out of mana or is always using up a lot of mana. When you're in the jungle, you're using no mana whatsoever, so you're going to always have that permanently high shield. Um, also, the 134 AP it gives because of the mana items which you build is kind of disgusting as well. This is why 
um, itemize into two mana items and another mana item synergizes as well with this in a different way which I'll talk about here. So Abyssal Mask is busted and people don't know it's busted and I don't really know why. I guess it's because it has a fairly complex passive but I'm going to read out what it does and I'll explain to you why it's busted, right? So Abyssal Mask has been overtuned for some reason and people don't seem to really understand why it's overtuned or what it actually does so I'll just read out its passive here. It restores mana equal to 7% of pre-mitigation damage taken from champions and and heals for an amount equal to 25% 25, 25 of the mana spent, up to 20 per cast. Enemy champions within 550 units of you become cursed, reducing their magic resist by 5 plus 1.2 bonus HP, which works out to be 17 MR with this build, so minus 17 MR on the enemy and gain 9 bonus magic resist per cursed enemy. So <laughs> this bit this this item does like 50 to, and it has um a load of different um gives you 10 ability ace, 500 HP, 300 mana and 40 magic resist. It's like everything you need on Diana. HP to scale with your W, mana to scale with your Seraphs, ability ace because you're a, you're an ability based champion, and magic resist because that's why we're building this item right it's an insane amount of uh stats even though it's not gold efficient the item itself isn't gold efficient the stats it's give it gives are still very very good so i'll break down some of those stats and i'll talk about how they interplay with this actual build here the build does the build this build which i'm talking about doesn't have any magic penetration which is also why this item is so good not only does it give you potentially 85 magic resist it also gives you up to 17 flat magic pen which is about equal to sork boots though you get free sork boots late game i guess with the passive it's 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 very good as i said not to mention all the healing and the mana regeneration which also um synergize as well with the Seraphs which I was talking about before because you want to be full mana when you're using the Seraph shield and this gives you mana regen dependent on how much mana you use so, yeah it keeps you high mana even when you're outside if the jungle wasn't enough you now have an item which also keeps your um mana high when you're outside of the jungle so next we have frozen heart frozen heart is the best armor item in the game at the moment it gives you 90 armor which is insane has everything you really need for an item, for an armor item. It gives you mana, it gives you armor. Mana scales with Seraphs, armor is just armor, right? So, yeah, and that's really more to say about that. So you can go for your... I'll talk about Hourglass next. So Hourglass is an amazing and terrible item. Its active is simply too good to give up and that's why I go it. There's not really too much more reason other than that. When you're dashing into five people, even with your... um. Your crown, you're gonna need that Zonius, you're gonna need an hourglass to, to stay alive. Plus, it's very useful for just like random situations. You're about to get dove, hey, you have hourglass, right? So now the person might die because they tried to dive you, which does happen. I've got a lot of kills from like hourglass um, cheese plays. For your last item, or your second to last item, depending on how you're building this build, you can go Lich Bane, Cosmic, or Nashes. Those are the main three. So these items are mainly just for damage and or movement speed since this is a bootless build and these items give a solid balance of move speed and or damage. So that's really why I chose those three. So I'm going to read out my second build here, the second build I like to go and then we'll go into the actual stats behind the different builds, right? So the second build which I like is... Rod of Ages, Rabadons, Zonyas, Seraphs, Spirit Visage, Dead Man's Plate. So in order, so it will be Rod of Ages into Seraphs, into Zonyas, into... It could be... You can, you can build the other ones differently. So they have a lot of AP, build, build Spirit Visage first. They have a lot of AD, uh, they have a lot of... Um, uh, yeah, AD threats. You can build Dead Man's even though you already have Zonyas, but it's up to you and then you can build Ramadan's last it's really up to you how you build this one so this build is mainly ideal because of the synergy with HP AP and Diana's E so with this build the one I just spoke about you get a 1053 HP shield on about a four second cooldown so the last build which I mentioned the um the build which involved uh, crown gives you six hundred gives you a six hundred and sixty 
660 HP shield and the most common build which I'll talk about in a minute here gives you a 780 HP shield so this build when it comes to your shield is the best by far however you might need magic penetration in the game and if that's the case I suggest you go Ludens instead of uh, Rod of Ages or building a Void Staff in instead of a Spirit Visage but then that kind of uh, defeats the point a bit of going this build because this build kind of relies on shielding and spirit visage because you don't just get shielding from um from your w obviously you get oh well i said diana's e before i meant her w sorry so you don't just get shielding from your w you get it from your seraphs you get it from your jungle item assuming you're going to green jungle item you get it from like you get it from a lot of different sources so I'll talk about the most common build and then I'll talk about the comparison between them. Yeah. So the most common build right now is Nash's Sword Boots, uh, Jack Show, Demonic Embrace, Embrace, Death Cap and Shadow Flame. That's the most common one. So with that build you're going to do 13,600 damage in 15 seconds and you're going to have 6,214 effective HP. With the crown build, which I spoke about, crown into Seraphs, into Abyssal Mask, into Frozen Knight, into Lich Bane, into Hourglass, give or take, depending on how you want to build it, you're going to do 1,000 or 12,166 damage in 15 seconds. So with this build, you're going to have 7,856 effective HP. And with the build, which I, with the Rod of Ages, you're going to do 12,142 damage in 15 seconds. And this build is Rod of Ages, Rabadon, Zonia's Seraph, Spirit Visage, Dead Man's Plate. And you're going to have 6,742 effective HP. So you could argue about the effective HPs here because you, you get your W up so much that it's debatable whether you have to factor in the W shield into effective HP and then would you count it also, if you're hitting somebody or if you're not hitting somebody because the shield gets doubled if you hit somebody, there's a lot of nuance which could be um, spoken about here. So I'll put up the MR values on the screen here. So I tested them as well with um, against an enemy with 50 MR and this is all the, uh, all the information which I got there. So I'll talk quickly about runes here. So I would say there's three main keystones which you want to go on Diana. First Strike, Dark Harvest and Conqueror. It's up to you which one they go, which, which one you go. They're all good in their own ways, in my opinion. However, I would say that Conqueror is the best out of all of them. However, I would say that there are other reasons for going in the other two keystones other than sheer, other than the keystone itself, because you might have a better rune tree overall. For example, let's say that you go Domination, Inspiration. So with Domination Inspiration, you're able to get perfect timing and you're able to get um the, what's the one which allows you to go into debt? The one which allows you to buy items early, which is amazing because you want to get Rod of Ages as quickly as you can because it starts stacking up and you want to get tier as quickly as you can also because it, it stacks up, right? So that's good for that. And if you went Domination, you could also go, um ingenious hunter to lower the cooldown of your tier to lower the cooldown of your uh, zonius to lower the cooldown of your seraphs when it gets fully stacked to lower the cooldown of your crown if you're going crown to lower all of these cooldowns which you have in your kit which is actually very useful right so for that reason it becomes a bit more complex whether you should go dark harvest or first strike or conqueror even though conqueror is the best out of the three conqueror doesn't have the best rune tree it's just more raw damage right it doesn't really give you any utility it's just like me hit harder or um me take less cc because it gives tenacity right so yeah that's really all i had to say on diana i would say that the world of ages build that's the one i've been running the most and it seems busted i can literally run into three people and just not die Plus, if we were to look into Rod of Ages' actual um, gold efficiency, what we would find is it's kind of disgusting. Rod of Ages' base, no stacks, just when you buy it, is 104% gold efficient, right? When it's fully stacked, at maximum stacks, 
it is 164% gold efficient, which is insane, right? If it was to read out the passive here, the passive is the same as um, the passive on Abyssal Mask, but it's just increased a bit because um, it's increased by 50% after you max it out. So, plus it gives you moves. It just does a lot of stuff. It's just a really, really good item overall, right? It gives you HP, mana, ability haste. It just doesn't give you CDR. That's the only problem with it. And if you really need CDR, then it gives it as a passive, as a, as a, mythic, as a mythic passive. So you're not really missing out on anything here. So yeah, that's the video on Diana. Again, I might be wrong about some of these things. And if you think I'm wrong, then message me, comment down below what you think about these ideas. And yeah, I'll see you a lot in the next video. Have a good one.